During the summer of 1995, a luxury hotel situated in Oslo, Norway became the scene of one of Scandinavia's most mysterious unsolved mysteries. A young woman was found deceased in her suite, and it was initially believed by authorities that she had committed suicide. However, upon further investigation, the puzzle only became more complex as the victim's identity was impossible to determine, and the circumstances surrounding her death raised only more questions. Tonight on Dark Curiosities, the mystery of Jennifer Fairgate. It was 10.44pm on May the 31st, 1995, when a woman using the name Jennifer Fairgate checked into the Oslo Plaza Hotel in the capital of Norway. She signed her name as Jennifer Fairgate and she had booked room 2805 under two names, her own and a Lois Fairgate. However, there was no other person with her upon check-in, according to the receptionist. Yet, another employee of the hotel claims they saw Jennifer with a tall man between the ages of 35 and 40, but he was never identified and has not been seen since. Jennifer said she was 21 years old, but was not asked to provide staff with any forms of identification. On the forms she filled out, she wrote her address as being at Rue de la Stede in the Belgian village of Verlein, and stated that her employer was a company called Service. Both pieces of information were proven to be false, as neither had even existed, and the phone numbers she had provided were also incorrect. Staff members claimed that she could speak English and German without an accent. Fairgate was approximately 159 centimetres tall with blue eyes and short brown hair and weighed 147 pounds. Between 12.34am on the 1st of June and 8.50am on the 2nd of June, eyewitness accounts and keycard registrations confirmed that the young woman had not been present in her room. Over 24 hours she had disappeared and it is not known what happened during this time. Upon her return to the plaza, she decided to extend her stay until the following Sunday. At six minutes past eight that night, Jennifer ordered bratwurst and potato salad to be brought to her room, and the food was delivered 17 minutes later by 19-year-old Kristen Anderson, who described the room as being sterile, completely untouched. Jennifer apparently gave Kristen a rather generous tip of 50 Norwegian kroner, this would be the final time Jennifer Fairgate would be seen alive. Several payments had been missed and the hotel staff attempted to contact Jennifer through her room's television. The messages were ultimately never read until 7.36pm on the night of June 3rd, where somebody in the suite confirmed that the final message had been received. A supervisor at the hotel became concerned when the Do Not Disturb sign still hung on the door handle after two days. As a result, security were called immediately. 25-year-old guard Espen Nace knocked on the door of room 2805 at 8.50pm. Moments later, he heard a gunshot from within the room, believing two people to be in there. Espen took the lift and notified the hotel security manager and also called the police. The room was momentarily left unattended. The security manager of the Oslo Plaza Hotel arrived at the room at 8.04pm, knocking on the door three times. Following no response, he opened the door ajar, which had been double locked from the inside, and to his horror, found Jennifer lying unresponsive on the bed in an unnatural position. The suite was dark, the television was on, and there was a pungent smell. The manager, who had only stood by the door, closed it and waited for the authorities to arrive. Police arrived half an hour later. Jennifer was confirmed to be deceased, a single gunshot wound in her forehead from a presumed suicide. A Browning 9mm pistol, which was found to have been manufactured in Belgium in the early 1990s, was recovered from her right hand, and this particular weapon was favoured by policemen, military personnel and those who were involved in the underground world. The gun's serial number had been professionally removed, and there were no fingerprints on the pistol or the bullet box. Blood had been spattered over a nearby phone, the bed, pillow and from the wall up to the ceiling. 
However, what was odd was that there was no trace of blood on the victim's hand or any gunshot residue. It appeared that a bullet had also been shot through an overturned pillow which had penetrated the mattress beneath and ended up on the floor. Housekeeping staff had told police that there was only one single duvet in that particular room, however two were found at the crime scene. Authorities found no evidence to confirm the woman's identity. No passport, credit cards, keys, tickets, driver's license, nothing. A briefcase was found containing 25 bullets and the magazine of the pistol had seven bullets. The labels on her stylish clothes, as they had been described by housekeeping staff, had been removed and at the scene there was a man's perfume which had Jennifer's fingerprints on it, which were not found on the Interpol database. Of the clothes recovered, there were four jackets, a jumper, a shirt, two bras and a blazer, traced as being a high-end German product. No trousers or skirts were found, but two pairs of pyjama shorts were. A pair of shoes that Jennifer had been wearing on a previous day were also not found. There was a magazine bag with 2816 marked on it, which had a fingerprint which did not belong to the victim, and as of December 2017 has been sent to Interpol for further examination. During her time at the plaza, Jennifer had attempted to phone two numbers, both of which were invalid. It is believed that she had tried contacting people in Glace Hologne or Serran. Many guests on the same floor said that they heard nothing of her sorts on June the 3rd. One guest told journalists she had heard banging that night from a nearby room, and another guest, identified as Mr F, had been staying on the same floor as Jennifer, arriving the day before she was found. He was a Belgian businessman and was in the room opposite 2805, 2804. Mr F recalled being told by a receptionist if he had seen anything suspicious since a guest had been found deceased. However, Mr F had left before Jennifer died. How could this have occurred when Jennifer was still alive and well? Was he somehow involved? Was he making an attempt to cover up for someone, not realising his error in his timeline? The mysterious man could never be contacted again. A post-mortem took place and the coroner found, first of all, Jennifer was not 21 years old and was actually between the ages of 25 and 35. There was no evidence of bruising or scratches on the woman's hand from the recoil of the browning and found it suspicious how there was no blood on her hands. The idea of suicide seemed the most likely scenario, but the evidence just didn't add up. The stomach contents confirmed that the food she had ordered was not consumed until almost 24 hours after she ordered it, and there was no alcohol found in her system. No drug tests were taken and police took no samples from beneath her fingernails which could have provided DNA evidence. So, who was this mysterious woman? Theories vary from Jennifer being a secret agent, a hitman, a prostitute, perhaps somebody involved in a failed drug operation. The list of possibilities is endless. Why was she even in Oslo? Did she commit suicide and if so, what was her motive? If she was murdered, who took her life and why? The grave of the unidentified woman was recently reopened by police who are hoping to find out at least where she came from and perhaps after more than 20 years there will be a breakthrough. The results are currently pending.